Welcome to Fermentation Friday. This Friday, I am experimenting on growing mold in kombucha. Mold is, is really commonly talked about in, in the ferments, and it's basically the one contaminant that you really don't want to get into your stuff because it just it makes it garbage. And I know when I talk to people online, it, it seems like it is pretty common that people can have mistakes where the mold gets into their into their kombucha. Lots of people recommend keeping a, a second culture or a SCOBY hotel where they kind of just keep extra layers of the the top mother and and then some starter tea in there so i also keep a second culture you know just just in case anything happens and then i also have it there if anyone would like to start trying to brew kombucha that i can offer up to to people because you know easy it's easy to make a second culture you just take some of your your finished kombucha and put it in a different jar to kind of just sit on the counter i've been making up a couple cultures over the past couple weeks in some smaller jars to do this experiment and so i have a you know, a, a couple jars of, of starter and a few little little scoby layers that I can experiment with. And so I'm, I'm gonna do my best to grow some mold here. I, I got some stuff and I'm gonna do the experiment and I'm gonna show you how it works out. Here's our three standardized scobies. I've done my best to kind of get them all, you know, the same, same thickness to kind of even out the theory for this test. Um, and these are smaller than the jar for the version that has less culture. Okay, so let's pick one of these out. This one here kind of looks like the oldest, kind of most hand-me-down version. So let's use this one in here and float that on there. And then this one, this is just getting a splash of starter. This is the one where we're testing if not enough starter is going to cause mold. If just, you know, not having that initial acidity to protect the, the culture from the mold is going to make a big difference. So these two, we are going to test if where the contamination happens affects it. On this one, we're going to contaminate the, the surface area of the, the SCOBY, and on this one we're going to contaminate the starter tea. So I'm going to throw my starter into this one. Okay, and then I'm going to take my starter tea and the SCOBY down to my disgusting mold to contaminate them. So right here, I have a very special something. This is a mold colony. <laughs> look at look how nice and moldy that is. That is exactly the type of mold you do not want growing on your kombucha. That's a that is a nice fuzzy blue green mold, and it is very active and very happy. And most of all, it is completely adapted to acidic environments because it is actually growing on top of a ferment. <laughs> so if anything was likely to take onto the acidity of the kombucha, this is, this is going to be it. This is, I've been, <laughs> I've been growing these cultures of kombucha, these jars of kombucha, and I've also been growing this mold culture for a few weeks now for this experiment. So, um, I'm doing this in my basement because I don't actually want to open this up anywhere near the rest of my kombucha, even though I am going to let these still grow in my kitchen. I just, you know, this is as bad as it gets. So, ta -da, we got our <laughs> Q-tip for contamination. making sure to not put my nose into this jar of poison here. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up culture here from multiple different spots. Make sure it's nice and varied. Make sure we get a guaranteed to get a living, strong living specimen. There we go. Very gross. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rub this on 
the, the little SCOBY here. Get it in there real good. Leave it chunky. And then I'm going to stir this into the starter tea. There's more tea than, than what I'm going to be using. This is just all the leftover tea. So I want to make sure to really mix that in there. So we have a nice strong mold culture. Close this poison back up. Okay, so now we're gonna add this in to our brewing brewing jars. Okay, so here we go. We got our contaminated our contaminated SCOBY into the thing. And then we got our contaminated kombucha tea into there and then we will cover that up with this okay so now we wait time for the grand reveal In jar number one we have small scoby not enough starter tea and it looks like we are good you know, the, the layer there on the top isn't necessarily as thick as, as I would like. We can poke at it. Yeah, so the, the starter layer kind of sunk down there. And, you know, this is quite thin for what my kombucha usually forms. But, you know, we, we had an entire layer in there. It's nice and acidic smelling, the way it should be, and no mold. So, pretty surprised on that one. Probably, I'm gonna have to retest this one with even less starter tea. All right, and then in jar number two, this is the one where I contaminated the SCOBY. And let's see. Hey, right, still, Still no mold. I looked at these a couple days ago, kind of, this is like the one weak point, and I looked at these at about three or four days, and right in the center here, there was a little dark dot, which as, as far as I remember, was actually a spot where a chunk of mold had got stuck on the SCOBY. But I mean, I can still very, very faintly see it but it never grew into anything. And you know, this, this is pretty shocking how, how nice and healthy this, this culture here looks. Okay, so last chance, last chance for mold. Okay, jar number three is when we contaminated the kombucha tea. And yet again, it doesn't, doesn't really look like anything. You know, nice, nice and clean. Let's see if we can. You know, I, I don't see anything growing in the jar. You know, pretty pretty shocking. I thought that there was a really good chance that all three of these would, would have mold. So this is definitely not, not what I thought was going to happen on this experiment. I'm, I'm really surprised just how capable the, the kombucha here has been to, to grow and to, to fight off the molds. So I was really surprised that there wasn't any mold growing on there. I, I was really sure that I was going to end up growing growing some pretty, pretty disgusting looking mold colonies and have some pretty good examples of what mold on kombucha looked like. I would like to experiment again with not using enough starter because I know that that's a really common problem. You know, if, if you just don't have enough kombucha into your initial sweet tea, you know, nothing's gonna grow out of it and you're gonna end up with something, something moldy and gross. Obviously, just because these cultures didn't have any mold on it doesn't mean that it is 
that kind of mold proof, you don't want to be doing contaminations into your kombucha. I wasn't overly concerned about getting contaminants in just because, you know, I was literally putting mold in it. So, you know, not having my hands washed and things like that wasn't, wasn't going to make it any more likely to be moldy than having mold on there. Always remember, use best practices. Like don't, don't try to get stuff into your kombucha. You want to keep that a nice clean culture. So, you know, keep things as clean as possible. Have you guys ever had mold in, in your kombucha? I mean, obviously I got the mold that I used here off of a fermented pickle. So I've, I've had mold in my ferments. I mean, part of it is that I left it sitting there, <laughs> not in a brine for a month. So you know, fair, fair enough. So let me know what your what your mold was like if if you've had it below, and wish me luck that maybe on my next kombucha experiment I can grow something disgusting for you guys. And I'll see you next week. Check out these beet pink beauties. I'm excited to see what these are gonna be like.